Well, it was always stated that we could see potential for flash flooding during the month of July, and certainly that has been the case. Even the past weekend, we've seen these scenes in Castle Derg and other parts of Tyrone, as well as Donegal, flash flooding a problem during the weekend, like I say, but... Well, it was always highlighted that we could see the potential for flash flooding and heavy rainfall during the month of July. Stark contrast, of course, to the month of June that was warm and dry. And this was the scene in Castle Derg, as you can see on the screen, back during the weekend. Another weekend of low pressure dominance across the British Isles. And we continue to see these heavy rains mount up more and more. So thanks for clicking on to Vogan's European Outlook for Monday the 24th of July. We are getting ever so close to the month of August, the final month of meteoro meteorological, I'll get there, uh, summer. And we have got a lot of contrast in temperature across the continent at the moment. Temperatures as high as 47, 48 Celsius in parts of Sardinia this afternoon, while temperatures in early afternoon at Aviemore was only 10.4 Celsius, an incredible contrast between the northern UK and parts of the Mediterranean basin. That heat, of course, is continuing to press eastwards. It has intensified more, and it looks as if we are kind of peaking in terms of the intensity of the heat. This was a tweet sent in by uh, Ian Cameron earlier on, and you can see here, it's not very clear for you to see, unfortunately, but you can see a 47 on the southeast coast of Sardinia, we've got a 48 degrees Celsius on the north coast of Tunisia. And like I said, we had temperatures very, very subdued for the time of the year in the northern half of the British Isles. Here at the house, I think it was uh, just over 13 Celsius this afternoon. But we have seen a little bit of an increase in sunshine through the, the mid and late afternoon and the temperatures have responded. But you can see here the current temperatures, we've only got 10.6 with a wind chill of 7.8 Celsius, incredible stuff at Loch Roscarnock. And even down across the Midlands, we're only seeing upper teens um, pretty much across the board. I think we're lucky if we've seen anywhere uh, reach 20 or 21 Celsius. I think we may have seen that in the south coast uh, earlier on this afternoon. But incredibly subdued temperatures for the time of the year. And you can see here off the GFS, the anomaly here, a good 7 Celsius below average versus a good 10 Celsius above, um, you know, between the northern UK and, like I say, the central Mediterranean basin. Some of those temperatures across parts of England where you would expect to see 24, 25 at this time of the year for an average, uh, a good 4, 5, 6 Celsius below average um, across these areas of the British Isles. And like I've already said to you, it will be a cool and average July. I had a very hard time to determine whether we would see a below average. I knew that we would see a wetter than average July, and that has, of course, been the case. But I was really struggling with the call in terms of with the warm sea surface temperatures, despite rain and cloud cover being on the increase during the month of July, I really struggled to know whether it was going to be below average Quite tough to do that, actually, given how warm the waters are surrounding the UK and Ireland. And of course, when you've got day after day of like you know mid to upper twenties, even low thirties during the month of June, it's hard to really comprehend that we would have had a July like we've seen so far. So certainly June and July, uh, a complete polar opposite uh, in terms of the weather pattern, generally speaking. Now, this is the 8.50 temperatures this afternoon, knocking the door of zero Celsius at 8.50 over the northern half of the British Isles here, or close to it anyway, whereas we've got 8.50s of plus 30, plus 35 Celsius at 5,000 feet over the Mediterranean basin. And it looks as if as we press through the remainder of, of uh, July, we will maintain this cool theme. You can see here this cooler air coming down from the north thanks to a, a fairly brisk northerly wind that will always temper the temperatures, that's for sure. And, of course, it is going to continue to uh, you know, sink southwards, keeping that heat um, you know, to the south. You know, there's no chance that we're going to see anything particularly warm through the remainder of this month. And we have got areas of low pressure that will move in during the middle portion of this week. We're going to see more rain 
we're going to see more breezy conditions, more unseasonably cool temperatures, but it will import a little bit of milder air coming in from the west, from the Atlantic, as you can see here during the middle and second half of the week. But we've got more areas of low pressure that are winding up, attached to a fairly brisk jet stream for this time of the year. And then that area of low pressure will move in during, you guessed it, the upcoming weekend once again. This feature here in particular looks to be a fairly deep area of low pressure for, you know, any point in the summer, never mind pretty much what would be statistically the peak of summer at this time of the year. Late July, early August is uh, generally the warmest time of the entire year for the British Isles. But you notice here that as we continue to play through this loop, that these areas of low pressure continue to keep the heat at bay. And we're just simply not going to see any of that heat across the Mediterranean visit our shores, um, you know, anytime soon. And I think what's interesting is that we've seen one surge of heat coming up from the south earlier in the month of July. We did see the temperature reach 32.2. That did tie the year, the yearly record for the British Isles. We did see 32.2 during the month of June. Um, but take that aside, we've had a, a real run of suppressed temperatures for the month of July. I think it's been hard to get anywhere above the mid-20s all month. Uh, when you take that aspect aside, that one surge of warm weather that actually pushed the temperature close to 30 all the way to the Murray coast of Scotland. Apart from that, the temperatures have been really, really poor throughout the month of July. And it looks as if we're going to start the month of August rather chilly as well. Look at this here for Friday the 12th, or sorry, I'm looking at the 12 UTC. This is Friday the 4th of August. Now, of course, long way off, finer details, impossible to say, especially this far out. But look at this here chart and look at the amount of cooler that's getting drawn off Greenland, over Iceland, unseasonably cold temperatures here. And then into the British Isles, we're seeing very, very cool temperatures at 850 across the board here so it's going to be a while before we get any kind of real proper warmth in the uk and like i say we're going to continue to wet in those soils that is going to have a detrimental effect on the temperature as well so this is the overview chart of weather charts and you can see here we've got that slack not only flow that is now starting to ease and we are seeing some uh, flare up of shower activity during the daytime nothing quite as bad as what we've seen over the weekend especially across parts of northern ireland but then it's as we start the push towards the thir Wednesday, Thursday, Friday time frame, you notice this area of low pressure here now starting to kind of edge its way in. And an initial frontal system will bring a spell of increased wind and rain across the UK. We could see along the, the southern flank of that boundary uh, some thunderstorm development as well. But as we play through the loop here, you can see that frontal system moves through. Then we're in that kind of shari regime but that area of low pressure really does uh, deepen quite significantly to the west. It looks as if it's going to deepen and peak in intensity to the west of the UK, according to this later shown in the GFS here. And then it eventually does start to move, I think, across the UK. But it's going to continue to keep the, the you know temperatures subdued, the unsettled theme going as we press through the final days of July. And you can see here more heavy rainfall moving through with an area of low pressure. And as, as we rattle through the sequence here, that we're not done with the shower activity at all. We're not done with areas of low pressure. It looks as if that's going to carry on into the month of August. And as I've promised already, I will have the August outlook done this upcoming work week. So stay tuned to that. Stay tuned here on, on YouTube. Do be sure to... Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so because i'm going to have a lot of chat about august and of course in recent days you know we've talked about the winter some of my latest thoughts with with that also the month of august generally and of course i had a, a full 25 minute two-parter global weather and climate report yesterday do check that out as well it's available on the global weather report playlist plenty of content there for you to watch and uh, yeah, that, I think I've covered everything for now. So enjoy the rest of your Monday and I'll hopefully see you again tomorrow with more. Stay tuned. Bye for now.